Hello, Dave McHugh here, now joined by Shirley Egner, head coach for Wisconsin Stevens Point. No, the Pointers are not playing, but <laughs> an important trip for the Pointers nonetheless is uh, you guys get ready to host this event next year uh, at Stevens Point. Um, you brought a, a good sized entourage, including your athletics director and others, to kind of get a lay of the land. How's that, uh, how's that research work so far? Oh, it's going great, Dave. Um, we really enjoyed our time here in Holland, Michigan. Uh, met with uh, athletic director Eva, and she has definitely shared a lot of information uh, with her past experience of running this mm -hmm. uh, championship for four years. And uh, we're excited to have it on our campus. And uh, we brought some UW Stevens Point uh, staff with us and trying to learn all the ins and outs of being able to put on a great championship. How daunting is any of it? Well, uh, you know, I served as chair of the national committee for yeah. a few years, and our athletics director uh, came to Stevens Point from Detroit, mm -hmm. and he was responsible for the uh, D1 finals, Final Four in Detroit, so right. he has past experience as well. So I think we're ready. We just need to um, make sure we have a timeline and fill in all those um, little minor details mm -hmm. that – uh, the average fan really wouldn't know needs to take place in sure. order to have a good championship. Um, location of where the games will be played? Uh, Quant Field House. We will play yeah. them in Quant. Um, we feel like um, we caught a break with our academic calendar. Um, we are on spring break, so we have our whole building available to us. Okay. Uh, we're planning on, you know, uh, engaging our community early on in the week and trying to build that momentum so when the teams arrive on, on Wednesday, we're ready to hit the floor, practice on Thursday, and then compete on Friday and Saturday. What nuances have you found while you're here that maybe you weren't actually aware of or didn't really consider while you were putting this all together? Obviously, you've had experience, but I mean, what may have been a surprise or a revelation? Well, <laughs> I, I'm not sure there were any surprises. A few things have changed um, since I was chair of the committee. Uh, there's now a, a, a team social that the student athletes participate in prior to practice on, on Thursday and uh, uh, more community service out into the community whereas in the in the past um, it, I believe the championship host would try to engage the community on the campus instead gotcha. of sending the student athletes out mm -hmm. into the community. Um, obviously it's a one-year bid there's a lot of speculation as to why it's only a one-year bid but is this a good opportunity also to just test the waters and see how things are going are you hopeful that you can get maybe more years if you're so interested yeah i, I mean i think it has to match up with our academic calendar uh, we would not be able to host this event on our campus if we were in school um, so it, it's a great opportunity for us we have a great following on our men's and women's basketball teams and I think our community has already shown once we um, were given the opportunity to host our community has already shown its support and anxious to buy tickets and I, I think it works to our advantage to only have it for one year um, instead of having to be able to have it back to back years but if if it works into our schedule and the NCA opens it up for an opportunity to bid in 2015, uh, there's a really good chance uh, Stevens Point will bid for that as well. And of course, Hope's hosted for the last six here. Um, we had Illinois Wesleyan has hosted a number of times as well. Is there something, you know, on the men's side, it's all in one location for the most part. Salem always wins bids. There's always other bids that are rumored but never seem to materialize. Is there something nice about going around to different campuses, or does maybe the women need to take that evolutionary steps as well? I you mean, know, I know it's two different dynamics. Right, and I, and I think, um, you know, you raise a great question. I, I don't know the answer to that, but as a women's basketball coach, I like the opportunity to go to somebody else's mm -hmm. campus and, and to be able to have your student athletes experience that, especially if you're a, a team that gets to the Final Four on a regular basis. and. You're not in the same venue and you're doing the same community service work. Um, now our men obviously have participated at Salem yes. a few times, and, and, <laughs> and they successfully have, right, and, and and they have a great experience there. But I, I think on the women's side, um, I would like to see it continue to rotate um, as long as we have quality institutions that put forth a bid and, and, and really enhance the, the student athlete experience while they're at the championship. You mentioned being a former committee chair, it, it just begs the question, 
your take on how things have gone with the tournament over the years and, and what you hope the future is for these tournaments, not only in who gets in, but how they're being bracketed and set up. Yeah, I, um, you, you know, I probably know a little more, too much. <laughs> yeah, a little more than I should. Um, but, you know, I, <clears throat> I would really like to see the NCAA take a, a, a good hard look at seeding the top 16 teams in the in the country while they put that bracket together, staying within those parameters of yeah. uh, 500 miles or less, and, and really trying to reward those those teams that really have done the, the quality of work during the regular season and reward them with that. Um, you know, it, it, again, it, that's a tough question for me, being, a, being sure. not just being a committee member, but also being a head coach. I, I think I think the committee and the NCA could do a better job of, of bracketing and, and uh, putting, rewarding some of those teams. Um, but again, I understand the nuances and, and I've been in that room where the state uh, map is up and we're putting push pins in and we're trying to figure out who goes where and <clears throat> how to balance the, balance the bracket. But, you know, uh, I think since 2000, I think the championships have really been a great experience for all teams that have participated. I, I think Terre Haute and, and Virginia Wesleyan and Springfield and Hope and Illinois Wesleyan and back to Hope, I think all of those institutions have done a remarkable job of, of really wanting to have the event on their institution and making the four teams that are participating feel very, very welcome. They each each institution has had their own flavor, so to speak, uh, regarding the championship, and I just hope that Stevens Point will be able to, you know, match what those other institutions have been able to do. Uh, final question: uh, You know, we've seen the men this year will be going to Atlanta for the 75th anniversary with your one-year bid. The speculation and, and everything we've heard is they'd like to reward the women in that sense too, out of a lot of reasons. Fairness certainly is one of them. Could, do you see that happening? And on top of that, if it does, is it something you welcome? Well, again, I, I think it really prolongs, um, you know, the championship. Uh, what do you do all week long uh, when there's only one game on Saturday uh, as you're preparing? And, you know, you know the, these kids, this season's long enough. And um, But what a great opportunity for the yeah. student athletes to be at the the – um, you know, major event for college basketball and be able to play um, tied into the Division One Final Four. So, you know, there's pros and cons on each side, and and um, I, I don't, I really don't know how to answer that. I, I think, you know, if the women experience that and it's a good experience for them when they go through that four week, five week additional uh, time uh, before they're playing their national championship game. Uh, and if and if it's good, then it would be a good thing. And you know, I, my gut tells me that um, it's probably going to drag on a little bit too long, and we don't mm -hmm. have that site like Salem. And, and yeah. correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe the Elite Eight in the semifinal games are are going to be played at Salem, yeah. and we don't have that site right. to to take them to. Um, you know, and maybe whoever hosts for 15, that's the or for. Uh, yeah, fifteen. Fifteen or sixteen. Yeah. Right, maybe that's the maybe that's the deal, and and you bring them on your campus then, and and play that elite eight and, and semifinal round uh, before sending them off to Division One championship. Yeah. We'll see what the future holds. Certainly here, uh, Shirley Egner, head coach for Wisconsin Stevens Point. They host this event next year, and we'll see where the event goes from there. Somewhere in the future as well. Come on out and support us. We'd love to have. A lot of coaches attend our, our event next March. And we'll have plenty more from Holland, Michigan coming up.